Okay, well, uh, then let's just start. Um, welcome everyone to this uh, workshop. Um, yeah, I will just uh, start with my slides in the first, uh, like I think 20 minutes, I will first give you some, um, some information about myself, about uh, user experience testing and some examples. And then in the, in the, the rest of the time, we have, I think an hour or more left um, we will go into breakout sessions. I have a, my, of a mural links I will share with you uh, later on, if I can find my chat again. <laughs> and um, yeah, then we can just go into these breakout sessions and try all these examples I gave and maybe find some more examples uh, in, in your own websites or in websites I uh, uh, pre-selected and we can just uh, try it out uh, for ourselves. Okay, so... Um, this is a, a little bit of the outline of today. So this is the last part of the workshop and the presenting of your findings or the discussion afterwards uh, will be the most interactive part. And in the beginning, I will just tell you about uh, myself and why I give this presentation and uh, of course the content of it. Um, well, who am I? Uh, I'm Kimberly Snoil. I'm uh, almost 34. I live in the Netherlands um, and I have two children one of almost four next month and one of uh, six, two boys. Um, I actually um, studied artificial intelligence, the bachelor, um, but for me, it was uh, too much about the tech technique, you know, uh, uh, robotics and uh, programming. And I was more interested in the people we're doing it for because artificial intelligence, of course, we're making smart uh, applications for people. Uh, so, I did not do the master's in artificial intelligence, but I did a master's in human media interaction. And that was more my cup of tea. It was more about interaction design and uh, user-centered design. Oops, it goes automatically. User-centered design. Um, afterwards, I started uh, in software testing and I've done so uh, for eight years now. Um, and in my work, I try to focus on the user as much as possible. And of course, we have to test the functionality as well but I don't see uh, a lot of testers who are uh, specialized in this area. They're mostly specialized in test automation, for example, or uh, more technical stuff. Um, and I think it's important to uh, not forget this part of uh, software uh, development. Um, in the past year, I've been focusing more on uh, user experience research. Um, so testing, I've done less and less maybe in the past a couple of months. Uh, but still I have these seven years, uh, seven and a half years of experience, which uh, I will share with you. And I've done this presentation for um, uh, almost, I think two years now, right when Corona started. So next month, I will actually do this presentation for the first time live in a Eurostar conference. So that's also a bit different. And this is also the first time I'm giving a workshop because normally I just give this presentation for half an hour. Okay, so the problem statement. As I already said, I think the focus of testing is too much on functionality or test automation only. And of course, I do not want to say that these uh, points are not uh, important. Of course, we're testing something and it should function because then you don't have anything. Uh, and test automation helps us in our uh, work a lot that we don't have to test everything manually. And it can be, of course, uh, uh, done much quicker and better with test automation. So I don't say that this is not important, but I uh, say that um, user experience can sometimes be more important than functionality only. Uh, because if the user experience of your product is bad and it functions, somebody can, for example, buy a book at your web shop, uh, but they don't understand how they can find this book and buy it, then uh, you don't have anything um, uh, of this uh, working functionality. Because when you tested it in your flow, it works, but people don't understand it. And there's a slogan, user experience over functionality. I stole a little bit from the test uh, Agile Manifesto because they, they have these, uh, these um, uh, statements as well. And I think we should add this one, user experience over functionality. Okay, so uh, this is a funny picture of what I just explained. So it can work, the business and you and uh, everybody can say, wow, I love it. It's, it's working so great, it looks so nice. And the user is like, what am I looking at here? <laughs> so this is a, uh, just a funny example of um, why you should not forget that user experience is also important. And of course, the earlier you test it, the 
cheaper it is to fix these uh, these findings. So um, yeah, this is uh, I think uh, something that most of you know, um, and use and but they do not see it in the light of user experience. So with functionality, of course, it's the same. If you find it late, it's too late, and it is very costly. But also with uh, usability or accessibility findings. So these are the techniques I usually present um, in uh, my presentation. But today, since we are uh, doing a workshop, I will only focus on the first two. So only the usability heuristics and accessibility testing, because these are very um, um, straightforward. You can just do it today and tomorrow in your work. And if you just practice with it, with it a little bit, um, yeah, I, I'm sure you will um, find time in your busy uh, in your busy uh, uh, yeah, schedule of testing of what you, whatever you have to do with your testing that you can also do some of these uh, things. Okay, and uh, usability heuristics. Um, I also have this uh, picture in my uh, mural, so you will be able to uh, look at it later on as well. But these are the ten uh, heuristics. And uh, in this uh, presentation, before we go into the workshop, I will give you some examples of some of them, not all of them. Um, so you can, uh, in the workshop, you can also find uh, some uh, of the, of the, uh, some examples in websites that do not uh, comply to these, uh, to one of these heuristics. But maybe I have not given given an example. So you have a little bit of a, how do you say it? Uh, yeah, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult for you to uh, find something yourself that I haven't uh, uh, told you before. Uh, so let's let's just dive into some of these heuristics. And um, I think it's it's not rocket science. I think you already know a lot of them, but if nobody ever told you um, to look at this while you test, uh, it could be that you don't even think about it while testing. And if um, yeah, I think I hope this presentation will give you some awareness about hey, I can also look at this. I can also look at that and you don't have to do it uh, um, um, without a guideline. So these are 10 heuristics. You can use it as a checklist and you can just test your application um, using these heuristics. And when you have these in your head, you can also look for more. Uh, there are some, some websites say there are 22 heuristics. So you can, you can make your checklist bigger if you have the time, but I think this is a good place to start. Okay, uh, the first one, visibility of system status. Well, we all know this, uh, when you are uploading a file to Drive or Dropbox or anywhere else you can upload a file, you can see um, how far it is for the entire file and how long it will take, so, uh, how many files they're uplo uploading, but also sometimes how long it will take. So sometimes it says like 30 seconds, 29, 30, uh, 28, and it will uh, count down. Uh, and this is very nice because then you know, okay, I know in 30 seconds it will be done, or it will take five minutes, I will get a cup of coffee. So this really helps the user um, yeah, gain some insight in what is happening. So they have, uh, yeah, the status is visible. This is uh, really nice. Um, user control and freedom is another heuristic. Uh, this one, when you see it like this, you might think, hey, what do they mean? Um, uh, this is a definition of the Nielsen and Norman website. So these heuristics are, uh, 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 Thought, how do you say, they, they're um, Nielsen, thought of these heuristics, put them on the website. <laughs> these Nielsen and Norman are the gurus of uh, user experience, and they have a lot of information on, of user experience on their websites, and they also give conferences. So when you have a question on user experience, you usually, and you Google it, you usually end up at Nielsen and Norman. But um, to explain this one, they uh, need a clearly marked emergency exit. So. This is uh, an example. Um, lately, uh, this is uh, quite a new feature from Google, not very new. It's been there a couple of years, but it wasn't there always. And when you send an email, it, uh, says, it tells you message sent and you can undo because sometimes you forget the attachment or you're looking at your message and you see, oh, I have a spelling mistake or I forgot something. You can undo and then you can add the attachment. So you give them some control back and it's not that the application has your message and oh, um, you cannot do anything about it anymore. I really like this one because haven't we all been there that you forget the attachment. So uh, yeah, this uh, really helps you um, gain control back. Another uh, heuristic is uh, consistency and standards. Um, 
this is uh, an example of uh, the logo of the website, uh, which is most uh, most of the time it is also the home button. So um, when you press on the logo, you can go back home. There is actually a standard of this um, that the logo should be in the uh, upper left corner, like Nike does here. Um, but some uh, websites put it in the middle. And Nielsen and Norman did a study that when the uh, logos are on the in the middle, centered logos, that 24% of the people have uh, uh, trouble finding it. So they, the percentage of users who fail to navigate home in one click. So when the logos are centered, 24% of the people fail to navigate home. They don't know that it's a logo. They don't know that it's, no, they know that's a logo. They don't know that it's a home button. But when the logo is on the left side, like Nike, only 4% have this issue. So you see that um, this is the standard. Just try to uh, keep uh, using the standards and not invent your own standards because people will have trouble um, getting what you mean or understanding what you mean. Another one is error prevention. This uh, picture is a little bit blurry, but I really like this uh, example is that it seems like they're really helping you with your password when you have to think of a new password. They really help you like, okay, you need an uppercase letter and a lowercase letter and a number, and it should be a minimum of eight characters. And they also tell you on which of these uh, things you've already done. So you already have an uppercase letter, it's green for the people who don't see that. And uh, there's already a number in there, so that's good. You're only missing these two uh, things, a lowercase letter and uh, the characters not enough. But this is looks very good user experience wise, but in, uh, when you're thinking of accessibility, it's not so good because people who are colorblind and most people who are colorblind have this red green colorblind problem yeah, then they don't see the difference between red and green. So we will get into that uh, with the accessibility part. Um, but yeah, uh, the idea of that you help users uh, uh, not make mistakes um, is in here. And prevention is better than, uh, prevention of the error is better than uh, the well-designed error messages. So you can have a really nice uh, error message, but please, uh, help people not make mistakes instead of uh, having this pop up, oops, something is wrong. Uh, and also, this is uh, nice, of course, that um, are you sure you want to permanently remove this item when people accidentally press uh, deletes or um, they were trying out a button or they uh, think, hey, I don't actually want to delete this, they can uh, cancel. With delete, uh, I think you as testers, most of you, or maybe testers, uh, might know that uh, this is something that's standard. You should always have this uh, when uh, you have a delete uh, action in your application. Okay, re uh, recognition rather than recall. Um, recognition, this is something you uh, recognize from real life. Um, for example, the home button. Everybody knows what home means in real life. When you go back home, uh, you feel safe and you know everything. And this is the home button we know of a lot of applications. When you go back home or you press, press on the logo, you will go back to the beginning uh, so you can find your way back again uh, if you are looking for something and you got lost in the website. So that's an example of recognition. And recall is something that you have to do from your memory. So it's something you've learned um, and you are thinking, oh, what did they mean again? And this is an example of uh, remembering with which um, account you signed up. I really like this um, user experience wise that you can log in with Facebook or log in with Google or with Apple and you don't have to make up an entire um, username and password again. But yeah, um, security wise, uh, it's of course not the best uh, thing because if they hack one of these accounts, uh, all of your uh, accounts are actually hacked. So be careful with it. Um, but yeah, this uh, heuristic says, make people recognize something rather than having to remember it. This is another example of it, which I actually uh, uh, experienced in my own life. Um, uh, this is a uh, saving application where you can, uh, not saving application, it's an application where you can enter a code of uh, milky products you buy. <laughs> and um, when you enter the code, you have like five, uh, uh, fake euros, so five optimal uh, euros. It's actually stopping this uh, this uh, this um, thing. 
but um, um, when I wanted to enter the code, I saw the code was all caps. So I pressed the shift button on my phone and I started pressing the code. And I did this a couple of times. And one day I forgot to press the shift button. And I saw that when I enter, even though it looks lowercase on the keyboard, it, it was uppercase in the, um, in, the, in the field. So the next time I went to the application, I had to remember, oh, I don't have to press the shift button. It is automatically uppercase. But this is something I didn't really like because why not make the entire keyboard uppercase immediately? So you recognize that uh, the letters on the keyboard are uppercase, so I don't have to do anything. So this is a, could have been done better. And the last example of recognition is, of course, uh, Word for people uh, who are using Word. Um, you can have different kinds of uh, uh, letter types, so titles, headings, subtitles, and here you can just see what it will look like. So you don't have to uh, think, oh, let me just try it out and see what it looks like. Like you have to do sometimes with, uh, um, how do you say this again? I'm really uh, bad with English right now, but with the type of letters. Fonts. You need to adjust the font. Adjust the font? Uh, I was just saying you don't need to just adjust the font. You can just go for the pre-collected one and apply it style. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So that was my last example of uh, uh, usability uh, heuristics. And now I've. Oh, yeah, now I will go into the accessibility testing part. And after this, we will go into the breakout rooms. So accessibility is also something you can test very easily. Um, um, you can do it today. And um, sometimes people think that accessibility is for people in wheelchairs and for people who are blind and people who have all these disabilities. But actually, accessibility is for everyone. It's about making the right information accessible at the right time to all people, despite their abilities and limitations. Because when you make a website accessible, everyone, the, everyone will benefit from it. And it could also be you when you have your arm in a cask. For example, my colleague right now has his arm in a cask. He broke his collarbone, um, so he cannot use his right arm. So he can only use his left. So he uses the keyboard a lot now instead of the mouse. Yeah, and he finds it really difficult because when he tries to tap through an uh, uh, application uh, with the, the keyboard, with the tab keys, sometimes uh, it doesn't work. So it's really difficult. Uh, yeah, if you have a, a, um, um, a temporarily, temporary disability, for example. Um, and also when you get older, of course, your eyes deteriorate. So um, then it's, it's also uh, nice if you can still use your applications. So for accessibility testing, we use the WCAG, and that's the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. And these uh, consist of a lot of guidelines and a lot of success criteria. And we all know this with testing, success criteria are the things we test. Um, uh, but it's very difficult because it's a lot. So when you can go to the website and you can read, but it's a lot of information. So I will give you some examples of the things I always did when I uh, had to do accessibility testing. Um, I had a few things I always checked. And if you do those things, you already are doing more than most people who are testing. So start small. And when you have those things um, in your system, you can always uh, do more. Um, and I don't know how it is in Turkey or in the country you are from, but in the Netherlands, the uh, government organizations or semi-government organizations are obliged to uh, be accessible. Um, so there are um, um, different uh, levels of, uh, of uh, apply, uh, compliance. You have A, double A, and triple A. We will get into it later uh, in the workshop, but we have to comply to A and double A. So it doesn't have to be that strict that, you, for example, you need a, a sign language in your videos, that's triple A, but double A is subtitles uh, are enough. So um, yeah, um, for government uh, websites and for websites that everybody should be able to use, like for example, your uh, national railways or uh, public transport, it is uh, important. So um, these um, guidelines are uh, divided in four groups. You have uh, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. And it's an acronym POR, so you don't forget it. 
And we, I will give you an example of each of these four areas, then we can go into the workshop. So this is an example of perceivable. On the left side, you see everything is in black and white for the people who uh, are not colorblind. Uh, uh, on the right side, you will see that it has color. Um, but the difference is not only in the pictures, but also in the content, the text. And on this website, um, the links were indicated with color only. So you could, if you can see it, you, you know that this is a link, but not everybody can see this. So some people did not see there were there are links in here. Um, so this is very important. Never only indicate functionality with color only. You can use colors, it's no problem, but do not use this as the only way to uh, let people know you have functionality in there. So when you have a link, also use an underline, for example. Or you can use that uh, icon that goes uh, out, outside to open a new tab or something. Another uh, example of uh, perceivable, uh, oh no, this is, uh, sorry, it's the same. It's about uh, how many people are colorblind. So 12%, uh, 12 men in, uh, one in 12 men, 8%, and one in 200 women in the world are uh, colorblind. So you see, it's a lot uh, of uh, people. Um, and you see in Britain, it's already 3 million people. And Britain is uh, yeah, not, uh, only, not the biggest country in the world. So uh, yeah, it's a really, uh, a really a lot. So you think maybe 12% uh, or one in 200, maybe it doesn't look like a lot, but it could be anyone here in this room. Um, okay, another example is uh, zooming and enlarging. This is also a criteria from the WCAG that um, people should be able to zoom in 200%. Um, you have uh, some applications where this goes wrong. So for example, in this application, is it Oh yeah, it's already, I, I used to have a video in here, but I already show you how, it's, uh, how it is. If I sh uh, zoom in, you see here, I zoomed into 300%. The content gets smaller <laughs> and everything else gets bigger. So this is not well tested. Uh, if you want to zoom in with this uh, application, small PDF, yeah, it goes wrong. So this is also something you can test very easily. Just uh, scroll with your mouse and um, hold the control key or uh, press uh, control plus and you can zoom into 200% and does your application still work? Can people still read the content? Try it. Okay, accessibility testing, perceivable contrast. Yeah, contrast is also very important. Uh, this is also an example of my own life. Um, I had to uh, uh, enter my son at daycare and I had to fill in a form and I had to fill in. This is the last step because there were like five steps uh, and everything went well. But in the last step, I have to enter my email address. And I was clicking on the, on the label, clicking, clicking beside it. I couldn't find the input field. The input field was all the way over there. So this is also something to make sure that the contrast is uh, already there from the input field so people can see it and make sure that the contrast is high. There are standards for this as well. You have tools to check the contrast. Um, and another um, uh, solution could also be make the labels clickable. So when I click on the email address, the uh, input field will uh, light up so I can find it. And this is an example of uh, those clickable labels, operable. So you click on the label and the input field becomes highlighted. So these are also like the best practices uh, you can uh, use in your uh, own uh, work. Uh, another example is keyboard accessibility, of course. You should be able to navigate through the entire website with your keyboard. And there's also something that um, you might not know if you have never done accessibility testing before, but there is a skip link possibility for people who are always using their keyboard and they are coming to this website maybe multiple times. This website is for people who are looking for work and they have to uh, 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 yeah, be on this website a lot to, make, to let the government know that they are um, applying for jobs regularly. So then you have to be on this website like every week. Uh, and then when you go, when you, when you use the website with your tab key, you don't want to go through the entire menu every time. You just want to go somewhere here in the middle. Um, in the action area. So then you have a skip link 
Uh, and that's when uh, a user presses that, he uh, skips the entire menu and he goes into the content immediately. So that's also something that every website should have, or at least uh, every, a website that is should be accessible for uh, everyone. Uh, this is a little bit of a movie where you see um, how you can tap to the website. So every interactable element should also have this orange line that you see where you are. And here you have a keyboard trap because um, I was tapping through the website and suddenly I got stuck here in this button um, on the right side um, and I couldn't tap further, but there are more buttons. So that's also something you should always test. Can you go through the entire website and go back to the beginning and not get stuck in a keyboard trap as they call it? Okay, uh, understandable. This one is quite um, uh, difficult. I myself um, are getting more interested in it. I am getting more interested in it because uh, my son um, has uh, symptoms of autism. So I'm diving into it more. Um, what, what is it and what can we do to make websites accessible for everyone and also people in the autistic uh, spectrum or with uh, dyslexia or uh, ADHD, for example. Um, and this was a, is an example of um, our prime minister giving a speech uh, when Corona was, uh, had just started. And you see there's subtitles, so that's nice. You have an interpreter on the right. She got very popular in the Netherlands um, because suddenly people every, saw her every day. She was making these, uh, these gestures that were also funny sometimes. Um, but what I saw on Twitter is that uh, people um, had trouble understanding this uh, prime minister, not only because he was using very difficult language, and that's also a criteria and accessibility, make your language simple. And in the Netherlands, we have B1. I don't actually know what it is in other uh, uh, countries in the world, um, but um, there is a standard in your country as well. You can look it up. And there's sometimes even tools which you can put your text through this tool and it will check uh, if it's a B1 or more difficult or I don't know, B1 or B3. Um, but um, yeah. People on Twitter were saying they have they had trouble understanding this prime minister because he was talking about things like an intelligent lockdown, for example. Nobody knows what he meant, or at least uh, not everybody knew. And the background also has text. So there were so many things happening. He was talking with difficult language. This woman was uh, tr translating. And there's the subtitles, and there's text, and there's difficult. Uh, uh, he was talking difficult words. So it was too much for people. And one thing that you think that you could do is um, uh, have the background at least simple, you know, no text, just white or a simple background that they don't get distracted by all these uh, words. And uh, actually, they did not do it because they did not read Twitter, but uh, <laughs> I think it was a really good uh, example. Okay, and there are also a lot of uh, tools you can use. Um, of course, people who are blind use uh, different screen readers. Uh, Dolphin and JAWS are very well known. Um, there's also NV Access, which is a free tool. You have to pay for Dolphin and JAWS. NV Access is our NVDA, as it's also called, is free, so you can download it and try it yourself. You have uh, Google Talkback or Apple VoiceOver, which is built in your device. So you can turn it on and you can try to navigate to your website with these tools. Uh, it's a real um, yeah, eye opener, if you can call it like that, but it, it really helps you um, to understand what people are hearing, how people who cannot see go through your website. Um, and it's really, really difficult. And of course, if you do it every day, it gets a little more, bit more easy because they listen to the words and it goes really quickly for them. And for you, when you do it for the first time, you have to listen to everything. Um, but yeah, you can uh, try it. Um, and um, um, yeah, it will help you give, give you an idea if people with screen readers can go to your entire application. Don't test the screen readers, but test if the content is found. So just choose one, maybe NV Access because it's free. And if it doesn't work for all the screen readers, yeah, that's difficult. We cannot test all the screen readers. So test if your website can, uh, if your website is accessible to at least one. And uh, these are Google Talkback and VoiceOver are built in. So if you have a mobile application or a mobile website, you can also use those. And make sure to uh, first look at the uh, shortcuts because when you're in these, uh, in, when you're using this software, 
uh, it's really hard to get out of it. <laughs> So uh, look up the shortcuts and how to use it because there are gestures uh, on your phone um, to scroll through all the interactable elements. And of course, we also have other tools who test the uh, code of your application, if the, is, if the code is well written, and also color contrast analyzer, for example. Um, there are a lot of different uh, tools you can use. I have to say tools will only get you this far. Not, not, you cannot test everything with the tools because for example, with uh, images, you should have an alternative text. So for, uh, especially if the images uh, are complementary to what's already on the website, uh, if it adds more, if it has diff, uh, important information in it, you should have uh, alternative text because not everybody can see your image, um, but this tool, uh, these tools will not check what's, what the alternative text says. So you could put in there alternative text check, but uh, it doesn't say anything about the image and your tool will accept it and it will say, hey, perfect, perfect score. So you can, this is just one example. You really cannot test everything. And I had, uh, I heard about uh, someone who gave a uh, presentation about these tools uh, where your website is perfect, 100% tested by these tools, it's good but actually you all only put nonsense on the website. So uh, yeah, be careful with it. You can use it as an addition to other testing. Okay, so that's it. So we can go into the, the breakout rooms. Um, this is just a, how do you say it? A repeating of what I already told you, accessibility testing, keyboard accessibility, zooming, contrast, screen readers, and code checking tools, and the Nielsen and Norman group you can use as a checklist. A book tip I also have, don't make me think. This is a really fun book to read because it really makes you think about um, daily things like a doorknob really differently. You don't want to think about, uh, should I uh, turn the doorknob right or left? It should just be uh, clear to you right away. And this is what all users have. I have it myself. I just, I don't want to think when I'm using a website, I just want to fill in the form and send it. And I don't want to think, hey, where is the input field? What should I do? Just make your uh, application as clear as possible to the user and as simple to use as possible. Let's go to the breakout rooms. How I should first find my chats. And Baris, are you still here? I am here, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, we have so 66 people or 65 people, yeah, 68, except you and me. Except yeah. you and me. Oh, yeah. So, how many groups shall we do? Um, Maybe seven because you know when you're in a group, it's nice. Maybe maybe you want to get to know each other a little bit, a little bit of around who am I, what's my uh, my title, uh, where do I work, uh, and you want everybody to be able to participate. So if you have very big groups, there might be like bystanders and people who don't have the chance to speak. Why so I think seven groups is uh, is good. And I will assign the groups automatically, just yes. randomly create. Yeah, the yeah, groups. But uh, don't do it yet because I want to. I'm looking for my um, uh, my mural links uh, and I lost them. I don't know why. So I have to open my browser again and then I can put it in the chat. Mural. Yes. Okay. So this is uh, one link we're first going to do. Okay. So we have um, how many? We have 50 minutes left, right? Yes. Till two. Okay. Till, yeah. We have yeah. So let's. Yeah, let's say we do, uh, do uh, 15 minutes uh, for usability testing, 15 minutes for accessibility testing, and then there will be also uh, 20, 20 minutes, minutes left. left. Yeah, and then we can do or maybe yeah, 20 minutes for accessibility testing, 20 minutes for usability testing, and then we have like 10 minutes left, right, uh, to come back and tell a little bit about how it went. Yeah, maybe you, you, can, you can spend 15 for both and for yeah. the last 20 minutes would be better because you will have seven groups maybe people okay. want to share their ideas okay so on the chat zone you have kimberly shared you the the links folks so what hope it works. will do will the people do kimberly oh wait a minute i got a wrong link here wait the second thing is wrong right um... okay here, this is a better link. Yeah, sorry. What is your question? What do people do? So now what, yeah. what will be their tasks? Yeah, they have to go into the mural and in the, oh, maybe I can share my screen again and show the murals. Yes, uh, please. 
see screen and then and they will act as a group so within the group they will discuss things yeah. and uh, draft some findings maybe and when they come back they we we kindly ask people to share their yeah uh, their findings yeah okay. Okay, so you can see, uh, you see my screen again, right? Yes. So this is an example for accessibility. I have here some in the upper left corner, when you're drowning and don't know what to do, you have some, uh, some examples of do this, don't do this. In the middle, you see three websites, the websites of this conference, another website meetup.com, where you can, for example, make an account and you can see how you can fill in the form and, it's, and a website like a mobile, which I really hate. Um, you can use these websites and um, go through, there's six groups now, I should make an extra one for the seventh group. And you can uh, zoom in, which uh, I have uh, Apple, so I don't know how you zoom in uh, again with uh, Windows, but yeah, zoom in. Uh, I think just with your mouse and uh, control. And then you can um, see here, I have on the left side, <clears throat> the website of Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. When you hover over it, oh, I should lock everything before everything gets, uh, Um, here, look. Yeah, so uh, you can go to to the to the website and you can find more information. But you could I'll actually also use what I uh, already put in here. So the first thing you're going to check are text or alternatives, and is there a text alternative for imported images, for example? So go to the website if there are images in there who which are um, not just decorative decorative in, images. The, do they have alternative text? And you can look into the code, which are uh, um, F12, you know, the console. Um, and I will just visit each room, so uh, don't worry. Okay. Uh, and so all the other things I put in here. If you want, we can go with six rooms as well. We have yeah? okay, six participants rooms. now yep. Yep. so yep. that they are ready. And yep. for, for each group, when I create the group, so they yep. will have their own charts. Am I right? Yeah. So they yep. need to go and fill in their own charts. Yeah, they so, fill in there. So group one until group six. So group. Okay, so now I am creating the breakout rooms. Okay. Okay. And so for I'm... usability, it's the same. I have six rooms there as well. Only it looks a little, little bit different, but it's the same idea. There are six groups, three websites, and some uh, information of what you can fill in. Okay, so currently uh, you are in room five, Kimberly, but I will make you host okay. so that you can go in and go out uh, and you, nice. will, you can join rooms. So if you guys do not have any questions, if you have any questions, please shoot now. If yeah. not, you will have half an hour to go and to do things Both. and come back yeah, with your, with your yeah. uh, quadrant. So I am now opening the rooms. So you will see 10 people, uh, around nine, 10 people and you pick your group uh, chart and fill that in. Okay. Nice. So I have one question. <laughs> yes, yeah. um, so so the, the plan is to, to do this using any tool or just manually? Um, manually, uh, manually. So not, not uh, the screen readers and stuff, just your tap, tap your keyboard, for example, okay. um, those kind of things. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> And you can, you, yeah, I will come. You can, you can look for a color contrast tool, for example, if you want to check that out. It's also really simple to find uh, plugins on your uh, browser, but you don't have to if you don't have the time. Okay, so people are joining right now, Kimberly. I am. Please do not join the room, so that I will uh, give you the host. And okay. uh, when you yes. are host, you can see the breakout rooms and visit the room and leave the room and come back here. When you are here, you will give me back uh, the host. Control. Okay. Uh, control. Okay, so let us wait for a while for people okay, to- 16 to people left. Yeah. Some Exciting. People. Exciting, yes. Now I am making you host. <clears throat> so you, now you are okay, seeing see. the rooms. Okay. And then you yeah, I see it, and I can also close the rooms. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And there are already people. Am I right? You will see six rooms. With yes, people. I see ten people, nine people, eight people. Okay, 10 perfect. People, people. So yeah. you just click on the room, and you join that room, and you leave the room, 
when you are leaving the room, please take it into consideration. Do not close the room. Uh, just no. leave the room and come back to yeah, the yeah, uh, come back to here. Then go to another room. And when when the when the time is up, please close the rooms. That, that will give them sixty seconds, and then they will yeah. come back. So yeah, super. Uh, you okay. have the control. I am here. So in case of anything, just uh, call my name. Yes, <laughs> I yes. will. Thank you. Thank okay, you. then I will check out the rooms. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. We're back. <laughs> So welcome back. So let's yeah, welcome back. Pick it up. Yeah. Uh, how? Uh, yeah. Maybe we can uh, present our findings. Go to, through each groups and group and just tell us how did you find the workshop? Because for me, it was also the first time. So feedback is very uh, nice to have. And of course, what did you find? So let's just start with group one. Who will tell us what happened? In group one, we have Avini Hasan Gül. Uh, Merve, Mustafa, Nick, Shane, Stavros, Unal. Uh, Come on, people. One person of group one. You can do it. Just one uh, thing. I can go, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can yes. Sure. Yeah. So for the so suppose for the text alternatives, we went onto the test, the live the test page. Um, I think there wasn't a lot of all text um for the different images. So when you go through each of the speaker images, um, for example, there was no text indicating who each speaker was. So that was one finding. Nice. It's good for us to, to update it yeah. the next time. Thank you, Shane. Mm -hmm. No problem at all. We couldn't find any in terms of videos. Uh, so just the, the 1.2, uh, the, uh, the video, videos have captions. We didn't find any applicable. Um, on the color contrast side, we had 22 errors um, on the home page after running the contrast too. Okay. A um, few obvious ones we could see as well. So some so in terms of visible. So at the very bottom of the home page, all of the payment cards, it's a very the payment card images are very there's not much of a contrast between the background image and the kind of foreground card image as well. Um at times when you tab as well across the main header menu and um, mm -hmm. the menu items go black so they're almost yeah. the same color as the background and um, so again um contra contrast is visibly i suppose poor in that situation and um, when when you zoom to 200 percent as well we noticed the top menu yes. items were um disappearing and um, so again mm. some I suppose accessibility up, uh, issues there uh, when you when you zoom in um, but, 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 yeah i think that was the main ones um in terms of the 1.4 guidelines um and then the keyboard accessible piece um i think there was definitely some challenges there just around um tabbing um as well so um let's say when you're tabbing through the speakers it's not clear which speaker you're on um i think you mentioned um kimberly around it putting a line to indicate so it's the active element yeah. that wasn't clear um, as you were going through each each speaker. Um, and as well, let's say when you're on the main menu and you'd sub menu items, you'd expect the tabbing would start bringing you into the sub menu items. Um, it, it, it wasn't. Um, so again, you were kind of left isolated in terms of getting to, if you wanted to get to specific sub menu items as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then in a few of the sub menu pages, Again, the tabbing, it, you didn't automatically drop into those page sub elements. Um, oh. so some challenges there as well. That, so that was, yeah. that was it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Shane. It's, uh, it's a oh, lot. So many things to fix. So, uh, Kimberly, Kimberly, Sorry about I it. I kindly <laughs> ask you to send us those uh, drafts, you know, uh, the yeah. boards. I would ask mm. you. Yeah, we are a testing company, but you know, mm. uh, yeah, but what can we do? Yeah, accessibility is always uh, like this that uh, you think, who is your audience, of course, um, and you don't know, you don't know uh, which testers uh, use only the keyboard or whatever. So, yeah, maybe it's good, also good to have a first, uh, uh, how do you say that, a survey, like who's using it, you know? Okay, but the next group. Next group, only have seven minutes. James, Kaugeraki, Mohana, Tryphon, 
and two che. Anyone coming in? Hi from... guys. Hello. It's not French, so... right? I don't know. <laughs> Let me tell you what we found. What about the text alternatives? Uh, we found that quite a lot of images don't have alternative tags. Uh, what website also lifted us, right or not? We went to yeah 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 to the first one. Uh, the second one about the captions. There are no videos in the website, so mm -hmm. it's not uh, the testing is not applicable there. Um, about the color contrast, we've used the tool which found some issues, not many, but we found some. Uh, zooming is very good, we didn't find anything. And in the keyboard accessible section, there are quite a lot of issues. Uh, at the top menu goes black, as the, uh, the previous team said, when uh, an item is highlighted. And also, uh, we cannot access the sub menu items in the in the other and some of the menu like conference and previous edition when we click, uh, press enter or space we cannot access the sub menus and after the menu in the main page let's say uh, we cannot see anything highlighted so we can see the links yeah. um, at the bottom left where we are but we cannot see any highlighted uh, where exactly the focus is uh, that's all from our side Thank you so much. Thank you, Trifon. And I am in the next group. Achilleas, Vinias, Chizigo, Gianni, Kyota. Hello, Kyota, by the way. Idi, mm. Kale, and Lina. Hi, Lina. If you select our website, please be gentle to them. <laughs> Lina, then, yeah, your session, I will delete your session today. Okay. <laughs> Just do it. Uh. She's so afraid to go. Yes, anyone having the microphone coming in front, stage is yours. You can also only get feedback on the on the uh, yeah. yes. assignment. You you are you have the microphone also, Idil. Yes, we are listening to you guys. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Go. Yay. Idil, do you want to go yeah, for it? Go on, please. Uh, okay, uh, we tested your site, like to test, and uh, we uh, what, love you. <laughs> what we noticed <laughs> is that uh, on the header, using uh, the navigation with the tab, the user cannot expand the menus on the header. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an issue with uh, focus states when we were navigating with tab, we didn't know where the focus was mm -hmm. on the page. Uh, that's all. Uh, okay. Anything, anything else? You mentioned uh, the drop-down menu. In... Yeah. The, the sub-menu items, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's mentioned. Okay. Is, is wait, there a, just, just a oh. comment. Uh, thank you, Kimberly. We invited you to <laughs> explain uh, the expectation on our group. That mm -hmm. was not very clear, to be honest. Same on my yeah. side. Maybe I just interrupted. But it may be good to have a more detailed uh, explanation yeah. about the expectation uh, on the mural board. And also, there are two types of accessibility and the usability mural board so we just managed to do one <laughs> maybe it's yeah. good for the next time just yeah because you ask and we say in the issue of it. yeah thank you yeah thank it was you. uh don't didn't have a lot of time but thanks very much i will uh no, no take it into that, the next that's time. maybe on our side but at the beginning the first uh, five or ten minutes we were not very clear about uh, mm. the expectation so that's yeah. it Time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so I will go to room four. Aral, Arda, Başak, Enes, Berke, Feridun, Machuskaya, Hat. We, we only have uh, three minutes left, and there was a uh, one group who did the Leica mobile website. But what was it five? Or it, uh, yeah, at least the group. Well, just we have we can website. listen to them. Okay. One minute per each group. Okay, go. Uh, so group four. the fourth group, if you have any findings left on live to test, 
please <laughs> go ahead guys if uh, nobody had an objection i would like to just take the microphone and quickly have a go very good um i would like to say uh, first of all um there other than the ux uh, options there are some functional aspects as well which didn't uh, work as expected in the um navigation menu but the test? Uh, uh, sorry live to test website yes live to test mm -hmm. websites uh, like if you go to a conference detailed or photo gallery just clicking back to the event schedule it doesn't return back because oh. of the um addressing structure of it mm -hmm. but um for example um looking at the audience as we spoke there is a good amount of turkish community right now included in there there can be a turkish option for the website um some uh, in other than that we also find that zooming out is not working well uh, on every um, text like when you zoom out 150 percent or so in a desktop 24 24 25 of the date uh, just zooming in a box and it loses the text structure no zoom option is available on mobile device uh, and uh, but recite text work uh, somehow the um, we can find the image links are uh, well texted but uh, when you go with the tab order there is no um, framing grayish kind of a rectangle to show you that where you are there at your focus so yeah. the navigation screen moves but you don't know where exactly you are, it can be a problem when you have text in the same line. Thank you. And, uh, Is it all or? Just to quickly jump at the end to the other board, we find, for example, in the error prevention and so, or maybe giving the control, in the payment page, there is the buy option, but there is no back option to return you back you need to go back to the arrow in the uh, uh, arrow in the page uh, to navigate your browser. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it is, it's a matter of style, yeah. but it can be good. I, I still have to say that it, it's a lovely page. In last thing it uh, uh, in the buying individual page, the Turkish ID and passport field are on a radio button option, which gives the impression that a single text box need to be used. I should be able to enter both my Turkish ID and the passport oh. number, if possible, if they're two separate fields. I got the point. So, mm -hmm. OK. Thank you. Thank you. These are the highlights. Thank you. Thank you so much, so much. Because I am hurrying up, not because I am open to criticism. I need to listen to the other groups. That is why, guys. Yeah. Uh, if you hurt my feelings, I will maybe <laughs> remove your registrations. What? <laughs> okay. So room good five. Moderators. Thank you. Thank I you. am a very democratic one. So Claudio, Eleni, Erman, Joel, Joel, don't do it to me. So <laughs> try to get. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, I can take the lead on this one. Just to quickly quickly share what we did, and I will try to, to be to be fast. Okay. Um, another site. Uh, just yeah. yeah. Feel free to. <laughs> yeah, to okay. So we we covered, and and Kimberly probably a suggestion for the next ones. It's to have like um, a moderator in each work group to explain a little bit what is the dynamic. Yeah. So I, I was more or less used to this kind of workshop. Um, but I believe that it would also help for the, the other ones. Yeah. So regarding the accessibility, uh, we found lots of issues. Um, in this case, um, for example, there is no alternative content for the, the image, no keyboard shortcuts, nothing. Uh, we also found some error from the JavaScript uh, on the console that can prevent um, some, some um, readers to, to go through the, the, the page. Um, on the the zoom or the resize of the text, as you can see, that doesn't work at all. The contrast between the colors and also with the text, it's awful. So um, for most of the users, they will not be able to, to see this. Even I was struggling to, to read this text. 
on the keyboard. Um, so for example, uh, if you use the, the, the tab to jump from the different items, you will not be able to switch the, the language uh, because there is no option to just to, to switch to this menu. And we also uh, found what we look like a keyboard trap where we jump from item to item and we go from quick research to somewhere unknown. And then on the next one, we go back to the my account again. We also did the... A keyboard trap is actually where you really are stuck and you cannot go anywhere you are else. Stuck. You this cannot... is actually an invisible, an invisible uh, element. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So on the usability, we also found some, some issues like the, um, we call this some status probably where it's really confusing what is the, the language. Uh, and then I realized that language is actually here. So it, it's a little bit strange what is the, the current status. Also uh, mapping to the real world where we would expect to see a Spanish ah. flag here probably. Yeah. Um, consistent and, and standard. Well, it's not really consistent on the size of the, the image, on the resizing. Yeah. That's um, accessibility uh, also more. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's both well, so on the recognition and um we recognize this as a, as a chat um on on the menu on the main page when we uh, click on the the main items and we lose the track so it's not easy we need to recall where we were or where we are so the the breadcrumbs are not consistent and this one is a tricky one so most of you you will recognize this as a close button or a dismiss alert button and actually when you click on this it closed the message but it also redirects you to a different page and that's not expected on the minimalistic design, well, nothing to say here. It will be a zero on that. Mm. On the errors, uh, we have some error message that works, but we also have these kind of situations where you need to select a mouse, but there is no mouse to be selected. On the documentation, um, I think at least that part they, they covered some somehow. Yeah, to, you did a great job, by the way, all the groups within a just uh, limited amount of time. Yeah. yeah thank you so right. much Joel. and the last group uh just uh one or two minutes and then we will close it and i'm sharing the afternoon workshops with you in the chat zone so that you will after the break you will come back at 30 past 12. okay so just proceed guys please evita sarkis ur yes so Anyone? Hi all, I am Evita. I am from group six and uh, we tested GIF test. So we identified some issues and uh, I will go through them uh, in a minute. So first of all, we identified that uh, in the user control and freedom regarding the usability. Uh, when you go to check in, um, uh, adding uh, uh, the payment uh, information, there is no back immediate exit. So there is an issue there. And uh, for the rest of all, actually we are covered from uh, the rest of the teams. So nothing more to add. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for uh, participating and uh, finding so many bugs and issues. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, grateful for uh, the first workshop that went uh, like oh. this. And thank you also for the feedback. Thank you, Kimberly.